All right, so hi, I'm Morris Rosenthal for PhonerBooks.com, and today we're going to create an index for my Mortgage Math Workbook. It's an ebook that doesn't have an index. I often don't put indexes in my books. In fact, I normally don't put indexes in my books, but I've had to do a few in the past for McGraw Hill when I've authored books for them, and I produced books, uh, books and indexes for books out of Microsoft Word 20 years ago, so it's old hat. Um, Word is actually a phenomenally good tool for doing indexes. Uh, let's skip down to here where, where we actually have some text to look at. And that doesn't mean you're gonna, it's going to make you a professional indexer. There's, there's a lot to creating a really good index. And we'll talk about that a little, especially when in, in reference to mark all entries. But it's not important to produce a really good index for most books. Um, some people only add indexes to books or indices, if you want to call them indices. I like indexes. Because they want their book to look professional. So really anything will do as long as it looks correct. I don't like indexes myself. I'm not an index user except in certain types of historical books. So I'm pretty indifferent to them. But moving along. So let's say you have this book and you want to start creating an index. So I'm going to mark the index entry Americans. And in Office 2007 Word, there's a couple ways of doing this. The menu-driven way is to come up to References, move over here to Mark Entry, and the Mark Entry Index bo box comes up. And, you know, the, the standard without changing any of the uh, settings here is fine. It does the current page. You don't want bold or italic, and we're just going to mark that singly. And you see when it marks it, it puts in this code. And you might be panicking at this point. Well, I don't want my document to be all messed up with these codes. It'll change the pagination and everything else. Well, it only does it as you put them in. Once you're done putting in your index entries, you can come up here to uh, the basic Word Options menu and go over to display and uncheck show all formatting marks and this uh, shows up in different places in different word versions and I'm hitting OK and it goes away it's still there but I've hidden it and if I remember I'll do it at the end right before we generate the index so to, to avoid scrolling I'm just going to keep on marking words that are right here in the current view so we're going to mark this uh, taxes that's a good word to mark right here to think and you notice the formatting marks are showing up again. I'm going to do financial decisions is one phrase, and I'm going to mark that. And as I mentioned earlier, you don't have to use these menus if you don't want to. Word is pretty good at giving you shortcuts. So let's do uh, interview style tax software. That's something I don't like very much. And instead of going up to the menu, I'm going to hit, hit Shift-Alt-X. Now you couldn't see me do that on the keyboard because the camera isn't on the keyboard, but Shift Alt X has been the shortcut, uh, keyboard shortcut for marking index entries in Word for quite a while. Um, let's do taxpayers here, mark entry, mark, and now I'll change back and do a Shift Alt X again, and we'll do it on mortgage payments. And this time, Shift Alt X. I'm going to come down here and say mark all. Now, mark all is very dangerous for the amateur indexer because what it does is it goes through the document and every time mortgage payments appears, it's going to add that to the index, even if it appears multiple times on the same page. So if you did something foolish, like came in here and, uh, let's say, interest, somebody had the idea that they wanted to mark every citation, every instance of interest. So we're going to come in here and say mark all. And you'll see when we generate the, the index in a minute just how silly that turns out. All right, and we'll do a couple more here. APR, that's a more reasonable thing maybe to do a mark all on. Mark all. Close. All right, and mortgage, we're not that stupid. I might have marked it already, so you would never, in the mortgage math workbook, want to mark every entrance of mortgage and, let's see, state income tax. I think we've got enough entries here to do a demonstration uh, mark, do a demonstration index. All right, so I'm going to skim down to the end of the document where I would like my index to appear. I'll feed in a couple of page entries here. 
and I'm gonna hide these. Uh, I'm gonna come in here like we showed before to Word Options and Display and I'm gonna stop showing formatting marks, okay. And that'll make the document look a little nicer. Okay, and oh I should before I continue if you if you want to know how to do indexing in a step-by-step -step way with uh, instructions for how to deal with page numbering which is the trick if you're doing an index that you have the hard copy that the publisher has sent you but the electronic copy of the book you have doesn't match the electronic copy they have because you're working in Word and if they didn't use Word to typeset the book the final page ends aren't going to be correct in your Word copy and you're going to have to change them. So I go through explaining that on my website phonerbooks.com. Uh, the document is indexing.htm. Alright so now we're just going to insert an index and that's we're going to come up here it's in the mark entry it's in the references menu again Remember, in different versions of Word, this might show up different places. I think in my old version of Word, it showed up in the Insert menu. But in any case, Insert Index, and Word is going to give us, do you want indexed, how many columns do you want? You know, you have all sorts of options that you can play with. But we're just going to go with the, uh, the absolute standard here and say OK, and see what Word comes up with, and there you go. There's our index. It hasn't, oops, it hasn't broken it into two columns yet because there's not enough entries to use up a whole page. But you can see that interest that we mark shows up on, oh, 26, I'd say that's about 15 pages when there's only 50 pages in this ebook. You might think that makes a useful index. I think that's getting a little crazy. Um, but some of the other words only show up once or twice. And it's a matter, you can always come in here, you know, and, and edit out some. I think it still lets you, yeah. So you see I just cut out a page number there. Maybe I'll cut out this page number. But if I regenerated the index, I'm afraid that Word would stick those back in again. And that's the trick. If your page number um, if your page numbering changes, if you go through and you're editing the document and you're doing index entries as you go along, you can always come in here and say update field. What I did is I right clicked. Let me do that again just so you see the action. I'm anywhere over the index. Right click and say update field and that works for uh, tables of contents as well and you see that it's put the page numbers back in again so I'm Morris Rosenthal for Phoner Books you're welcome to visit my indexing page at phonerbooks.com indexing.htm and I hope this answers the question for the person who asked me to do a video of index